Hi guys and welcome back and today we get on with the third part of the M26 Pershing build and this is the final installment. So we're up to step 9 which is the 30 cal machine gun and that's got a little bit of PE associated with it. The headlights, four parts here. Tammy a very considerately give a little dimple at the end of the barrel of the 30 cal machine gun so it makes it easier to drill out the barrel. And just a few photos here now of me coming to grips with the PE. and mounting the headlights in the correct positions. So I have to drill a little hole in the front plate there to accommodate the wire for the little micro LEDs that I'm putting into the headlights. And that also required just a little bit of a modification to the headlights themselves. So removing the light part from the column and then doing a little bit of uh, plastic card work to close up the back to hide the wires. And there they are. It's me just uh, fumbling with the wires on the battery, the flickering. So very happy with that. So putting in the micro lids is not as hard as uh, I thought it might have been, and I thought it might be worth just for the hell of it to show a little bit more detail about that process. So just sit back and relax, and I'll uh, avoid talking over it. Yeah, really quite simple, and it was purely a cosmetic decision on my part to decide to close the back of the columns off with some plastic card. So sit back and enjoy, and I'll come back in a minute. So my order of decent wire finally turned up, so I've been using scraps and fuse wire, and it's, look, I mean, you can see it's, it's just rubbish. So I was happy that this finally turned up, and this will be the stuff that I use moving forward. I did contemplate rewiring the whole thing, but I just didn't have the energy to do it. So this will just show the wiring that I'm doing in preparation, because I want to keep the upper hull, the lower hull, and the turret separate from each other while I'm doing the painting, just because I think it's easier to handle and I want to make sure the turret can still move, and sometimes if you paint with the turret in, in place, it can get stuck, and there's too many delicate things going on in there for me to uh, want to go through that stress. Um, so here, just stripping off the outer casing and then pulling back the inner plastic protecting sheath. One of the things, um, if you ever saw uh, my original diorama with the uh, Halidonium 172nd scale tanks, and the little stop motion animation, the my soldering skills are appalling. 
big globules of solder were dropping into the plastic and melting through, and it was just horrendous. And look, I'm no expert, but I'm happy through this exercise that my soldering skills have actually improved quite a lot and getting some better tools now. And, and since I've done this, a proper wire stripper, automatic wire stripper has turned up in the post as well. So gradually building up some skills and some equipment to do this better. So anyway, long story short is uh, this is all preparatory work for once it's mostly painted, then bringing the three bits together and being able to join the wires without breaking anything or dislocating my wrist. And hopefully everything still works once it's sealed up like a drum. So what I'm doing now is using some styrene rod to fashion a blank for the headlight so I can cast in clear resin headlights. And I thought I'd go for two, just a very smooth one, and then the one that sort of might represent that sort of blocky glass or maybe even uh, with some wire through it. So I thought I'd done a reasonably good job, given the size of them, these are tiny, and just put them in the bottom of a shot glass in readiness for pouring in the uh, silicone for the mould. And I just put a little bit of black paint in there because I thought it would show up better uh, when I'm pouring the clear resin uh, for the actual globes. So then into the demoulding, and I just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to give it a good clean. And this was an idea that sounded great in my head, but uh, proved to be absolutely pointless and a waste of a syringe in real life. But anyway, um, you live and learn. So that's the clear resin. And just filling up the two little depressions to uh, try and make sure there's no bubbles in there as well. So you can get a bit of a poke. And then almost as an absolute afterthought, and you can see my brain slowly grinding away there, there's a natural depression from the bottom of the shot glass. I thought, ah, oh, well, I may as well, I've got excess, I may as well chuck some in there. And so here we have the close-up of the fruits of my labour. This is supposed to be my smooth lens. And then I've also got the, well, I'm going to just call it the corrugated lens. I don't know if that's right. Anyway, not happy with either of my blanks and how they turned out at all. And that was a bit frustrating. But the happy accident was the little natural depression in the mould from the bottom of the shot glass is exactly the right size, fits perfectly, and looks really good. So sometimes good things do happen to bad people. So with all that rooting around finished with the lights, on to step number 10. And that's just putting some of the grills on the back and a couple of bits and bobs on the front. Theoretically the hatches as well, but I'm leaving them for later on. This PE piece here clashes with where the adaptive camouflage units sit on the fenders so i decided i'd give that the lemonade and sass plus it looked way too complicated for the first real piece to do and my brain wasn't ready for it so just uh, cleaning up the parts in readiness to whack them on you can see what's going on here and i will return
So the handles on these grills will come off later on and be replaced with some PE handles instead. Up to step 11, and this is starting to get more and more of the little gribbly bits on. They're the hatches I spoke about before that I'm not putting on at the moment because I've got to figure out how to get the figures in there and make all that work. And the rest is uh, pretty self-explanatory, so I think, again, just let you look at some close-ups and some, some of the pictures of the P with the macro lens on, and uh, you'll be able to follow what's going on pretty well, I think. Now, that was a bend in the P I just couldn't pull off. And I haven't got a tool that facilitates it, and it just looked crap when I did the first one. So I um, just modified the approach to make sure it was easy, but we still got the effect. And after about 10 minutes of searching for a piece that went pinging out of the uh, tweezers, this is where I found it. A three-pointer for sure. And just to speed things along, some of these uh, depressions that you don't need, I was just using a little bit of thin plastic rod and using the Tamiya Extra Thin glue to melt it in there, and that worked really well, especially when they're being covered up and you don't need to worry about the exact perfect finish. Most of Steps 12 parts are replaced by PE. And the only thing I think I didn't do was the guards around the headlights because that was just too many folds and too fiddly and uh, I'm a bit too lazy. And I dropped the little latch for the wooden block, and this is the result of five minutes searching and wrestling with the carpet monster. I found it, and I found all this other crap as well. So one of the fiddliest bits of the P was uh, in tidying up the telephone thing. That's where the little springs came into play and uh, a couple of really tiny little pieces of P to bend into shape. A little bit of carving off of the actual plastic part. So it looks all right, but this reinforces my love-hate relationship with P because it looks all right, but you've really got to be zoomed in to see it. And it's one of those things I know that won't look much different once it's all painted. Moved through into the periscopes. And that again required a little bit of carving off of some of the moulded parts. And then slowly building it up with the PE parts and also the actual resin periscope itself, which required just cutting down to the right size. And after much humming and hurry, I decided to use the guards from the PE instead of the plastic, but I'm, on balance, there's not much difference. So moving on to the tow rope, and the kit comes with a plastic molded tow rope. The ET models aftermarket set comes with this silver wire, but it's very flexy, but it won't hold its shape. It wants to bounce out. And if you get brutal with it, you get square corners. So I just had this brass wire, which uh, molds around beautifully. So I just replaced uh, the plastic and the ET model stuff with this.
And if you cast your mind back a little bit earlier to the PE construction bit that I didn't do, which was uh, for the whatever that thing is on the front fender, I decided I'd use the B32 part for clamps for the tow rope because they looked around about the right size. And that's those little fellas there. And then I just traced out on this old scrap piece of wood from the plastic kit part where the clamps actually needed to be. Not overly sophisticated, but it seemed to work all right. And then with the help of a few small nails, I just sort of matched up the brass wire to the little blueprint that I'd drawn there and built a little jig to um, wind it all around and then help me keep it in place for gluing. So that came out pretty well and I've got the little clampy things around it and then I just put some really thin wire through the holes to sort of represent ties and that's what will then go onto the back of the tank. Now a little issue here with this handle, the Tamiya instructions say there's uh, a hole for it to go into and there's a peg, there ain't no hole, so that's not a big deal, it's just uh, slice the peg off and stick it on anyway. And then these are the photo etch handles that will go on the rear deck. And when I did the first one of these, it was really hard to fold back the final fold on the handle. And I had to use my pointy tweezers and that created some scoring. And then when I looked at it, I thought, I actually like that. I think that'll pick up some nice weathering effects later on. So I deliberately scored the rest of them so they were consistent. Now that little clamp nearly did my head in. So small, so many tiny pieces. Looks great, but I'll tell you what, you won't notice the difference between it and a plastic part once it's all painted. So this is again where I have a big question mark over the value of some of the PE. That's really hard, especially for old guys like me. Uh, you younger guys with better eyes and better fingers are probably lapping this up, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's just a bit too much. So again, just using some plastic rod here to fill a couple of these depressions that aren't being used. The only reason I'm doing it is because it's just faster than filling it up with the two-part epoxy putty. And I didn't have exactly the right size, so I just used the rotary tool to um, make it smaller. And then I thought I'd commandeer these pieces of photo etch to be tow rope clamps, but stupidly just them on based on the instruction drawing and didn't actually measure it against the tow rope. So when you look at the final reveal, you'll see the tow rope doesn't actually go near any of them. I will fix that up, obviously, before I call the whole thing finished, and I'll do that before I start doing the painting.
So up to step 15 now, which is the gun barrel and putting the turret together. So just gluing the upper and lower parts together. The pieces from the kit that you still need, and that's just to give it the ability to move. These are the ABA pieces for the actual metal gun barrel. I, I, I love these metal gun barrels. I think they look fantastic. My only gripe would be that they don't come with any instructions. So if you're not overly familiar with them, where do all the little pieces go? Happily, YouTube has always got something in there for you to view. So I managed to find some still pictures, I think it was, but that showed me where they are. And you'll probably be sitting there thinking, well, it's not rocket science, mate. You should have been able to work it out. And, and I did eventually but always nervous about putting something in the wrong spot with super glue in there uh, to get it out. So all hooks up very nicely. It looks wonderful. It's a bloody massive gun. I'd be scared if I saw that pointing at me. And then on with step 16, which is all the other little gribbly bits. You can see what's going on here. So I'll wander back in a little while. So I've always found P that projects out the side or up above, so not flush basically, a little bit fragile and I tend to keep knocking them off over and over again when I'm handling the model. So I just drilled out a partial hole to recess the post and then used the super glue as normal to stick all that together and then decided to come back in with a little bit of solder and some key joints just to give it that extra strength and rigidity and that actually worked quite nicely and after sanding it up I think it will have a suitable sort of soldery finish on a couple of the joints under the, under the final paint job to, to make it look quite good. So step 17, and we're in the last three or four steps now, and that's mainly the main turret hatch and the inside and outside configuration of those. And given that I will have all of the main hatches open, I needed to pay good attention to cleaning these up. So it's a matter of just carefully removing some of the molded parts that the kit comes with and then replacing those with the PE parts. So the instructions on this are pretty clear in the PE instructions. The only thing I probably did differently is I think they were calling for you to drill all the way through so you could slide the periscope through. Uh, I, I just cut it, but um, that's, that's going from memory now quite a few days after this part of the build, so I might just be telling lies. And this might be a helpful tip, but after you've been uh, sanding or scraping off, say, seam lines or doing modifications like this, I um, have gotten to the habit now of just giving it a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol, and that seems to clean up any of the little dust and residue bits really, really well. Now this is the outside of a hatch which you really won't see uh, very well because it will be open so it won't be easily viewed and I just couldn't be bothered fiddling around with all the PE and the little springs to do that so I left the kit piece as it was on the outside and I just did the mods to the inside. Now I also tend to be a 
compulsive collector of materials, and here's the end of a bit of a belt that I reckon I adjusted four or five years ago, which I've just had sitting in my drawer waiting for the moment where it might be useful. And I thought it might be useful to simulate the head rest protection sort of thing on the inside of the hatch, and that's what I used it for. I had to make the little posts for the lever from plastic rod, and whilst it looks crap in 21 times magnification, you can't really see it all that much uh, when it's in situ with the naked eye. And finishing up with step 18 and 19, which is pretty much doing the 50 cal submachine gun. So this required quite a lot of the actual parts of the machine gun, the plastic parts to be removed and replaced with the PE pieces. And there they are, they look really nice. This rod through the block had to, had to remove the block. I couldn't see how I was just going to do that without taking the whole lot off. So I did and just replaced the post. Drilled out the gun barrel, took off all the other bits and pieces, scraping them off or filing them. And then, to the best of my limited eyesight and ability, stuck them all in place with some super glue. And then the last thing to do was to do the ammunition canisters and calling it pretty much done. And so that's it. Great kit to build, typical Tamiya kit, went together brilliantly. This is about the third or fourth time I've used an aftermarket photo etch set, but the first time I've ever actually used one that is the right one for the kit that I'm building. So the P was actually really easy. I struggle with the tiny bits, but that's, um, that's just a skill thing uh, rather than a criticism of the kit. And uh, really happy with the way she looks. I um, love PE when it's like this because I think it looks fantastic. I'm not convinced about its value once it's painted, but that's in the eye of the beholder, I, I guess. So really happy with the way it's come up. The painting will be the next thing, but I'm really keen to start building the bio base. So I think that might literally be the next thing I start doing. And uh, I need to do a little bit of kit bashing with a mini art kit because I need to sort of double the size of the of the building that's in the box so that should be a bit of fun and then I think once I've got that base sort of sorted out I'll come back and finish the painting on the tank and then put the figures together I'm still waiting for stuff to come that's on back order from the hobby supply shop so I'm not sure when that will turn up but those figures that I'm waiting on are sort of integral to the whole story so fingers crossed anyway multiple spins around the block here on the spinning wheel and then some close-up stills and I will come back and say goodbye
So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, really good fun to make and pleased with the results so far. So as always, really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Like if you liked. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And remember to click on the bell so you get the notifications for new videos as they come out. And I always look forward to your comments and we'll reply to them all. So look forward to reading those. And otherwise, take care. Be careful. It's a dangerous world at the moment. Lots of things happening. Look after yourselves and I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>